Yeah. Right. It's a, it's an easy, it's an easy sell yeah. that I never, I don't know why I never and went we down this it, road. And Dave and I are working on a, on a personal funnel for me today. Dave's our marketing manager. Yeah. So we're make we're working on a funnel today where, you know, instead of having like Lincoln bio mm -hmm. on all the stuff, it's, it's going to be more a landing page for a newsletter sign up or text message, mm -hmm. you know, like send me a text and you know, whatever. Right. So from social media, oh, it's just like a catch all for everyone, regardless of the. Yeah. So, so this is kind of where it's going to go. So, and, and this is what I've seen over the last little while. Like we, I get hundreds, if not thousands of people clicking on the LinkedIn links. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're converting. I don't know. You know, you know, I, I don't know that it actually might be something interesting if we could figure out from our analytical data, if anything's coming through Linktree, mm -hmm. uh, and from my personal link tree. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, uh, I get that link in my social media bios gets hit quite a bit, but there's no like conversion with it. Right. Mm -hmm. In terms of, yeah, maybe we'll get somebody going to Canadian protein and maybe they'll click on it and maybe they'll be like, Oh, you know, I can use some supplements, whatever, but it's not, you're not selling the person. Mm -hmm. on it right and and i'll give you an example i was i was telling dave uh this the other i think it was, I, I think i was telling you on the phone as well like i i posted on twitter a uh a bulletproof coffee and yes. i gave a little quick yeah. synopsis of why having this type of thing in the morning or before your workout or whatever is a great idea mm -hmm. you know, not only i, I love the taste of coffee but yeah. i've noted i've i've noticed a considerable difference having coconut oil in the morning with my coffee and then going to work out for some reason I, I like obviously the science is behind it I remember the science reading it but there's some science behind you know MCT oil converting into energy mm -hmm. and providing a significant boost fairly quick yeah. without the same type of you know insulin spike that you know having carbs would provide and then all of a sudden you're falling off and you're lethargic and it's not the same it's a it's a sustained instant boost almost of energy which and it makes you feel great okay um so that post that i made got a good amount of interaction mm -hmm. and people were and i posted a link to canadian protein and i noticed like you know some sales from it now and i was like i'm thinking in my head i'm you know over the weekend I saw a couple people that are doing this really well on Twitter, but not as well as they could be mm -hmm. based on their businesses and the ease of how, I guess, how easy their businesses could convert. Yeah. Our businesses are are built for conversions. Like we, we spent a lot of money on building, you know, building out our strategy for getting you to convert as yeah. a customer on Canadian protein, our conversion rate is extremely high in the mm -hmm. industry, right? Yeah. I think, I think you even mentioned that. Oh yeah. They, they continuously comment on us, the fact that we're in like the top 0.1 percentile yeah. for conversion. Exactly. And that's not by mistake. No. So, uh, over the longest period of time, I was always like, okay, well, how do we build this funnel? How do we get investors for the, for coach with capital? How do we, how do we leverage, you know, Synergy Private Label, the yeah. contract manufacturer that we have. How do we leverage Canadian Protein? How do we leverage the meal prep company? And then, and then I'm I'm thinking, or I'm 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 sitting there on the weekend. I can't remember what I was doing, but I'm I'm sitting there on the weekend, and I, I'm going through Twitter, and I see a couple guys, like I was mentioning, and and they have this click funnel thing, right, where it's you know, click my link or whatever. It doesn't say click my link or whatever, but it's you know, you have a compelling bio, right, and then you're compelled to click the link in the bio, mm -hmm. right? Because you want to find out more information about this guy. Maybe it's like, for me, it's, oh, you know, I built a $100 million e-commerce company and a $100 million real estate portfolio. Want to find out how I did it? Click, click the link below. Mm -hmm. Like that would be something, would you not click that? Yeah. I would, Yeah. right? Um, so, so for me, these guys had something compelling and I was like, you know, I'm going to look into how these guys are, you know, capturing or whatever people. So I start going down the rabbit hole and I'm like, fuck man, like we are missing, I am missing the ball. Did you see anyone that's executing on that really well? Yeah. Yeah, I did. So, so there's a couple guys in the real estate space that I follow and, and, uh, you know, they got, they built a 
pretty big following on Twitter mm-hmm. based off of almost almost going the opposite way that we always say to go with is which is you know the riches are in the niches or whatever Mm -hmm. these guys are are kind of casting a wide net Mm. by almost sending out um controversial posts right which i can actually relate to because a a lot of my feelings and a lot of the ways that i actually even think about business and real estate is very contrary it's it's very contrary to what someone would would actually think even yeah. the the previous uh you know podcast that we just mentioned about how you know my views on not bringing in like the key to business is not people it's not it's soping your business and making it almost like operate like a robotic system yeah right that's the key to business or a successful business so so these guys are doing a very good job at casting a wide net and saying some controversial shit, getting a lot of eyes on people. But the people that maybe the eyes are, the people that they're trying to attract out of that, say, 5 million impressions, maybe mm-hmm. there's 100,000 people that would vibe with maybe not what they're saying or realize it's a troll. Yeah. They're trolling and then realize that, think it's maybe funny, look at some other other posts and realize, oh shit, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. I'm gonna go down the rabbit hole of this guy, yeah. clicks on the link, boom. Now now he's uh, you know, subscribed to his email list. Now that he's getting these emails, maybe he's getting, maybe he could select on, you know, and this is for me, you know, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build out the same system, right? Where it's it's gonna be a lead gen where, you know, we're gonna Ask we're not. I'm not gonna put. A, I'm not gonna post like the the businesses. I'm not gonna post like Canadian. Hey, go to this link for Canadian protein. I'm not gonna post a YouTube videos. I'm not gonna post anything. I'm gonna mm-hmm. be like, okay, you want to see something about real estate? You're gonna have three checks. Subscribe to my email. You're gonna have like real estate, you know, e-commerce or whatever business in yeah. general, and then like maybe like health and nutrition. Yeah. Okay. And then if you're only interested in real estate, maybe click on real estate. Mm-hmm. Right. But you're gonna get an email. You're gonna be get an email about me. Right. And explaining, yeah. okay, well, this is what I've done. This is who I am, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then it's going to kind of give you some more value as the days go on. And these are just automated emails, automated that emails that I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. write, yeah. I'm going to write myself and I'm going to provide for everybody. And then, um, yeah, it's going to be, and then, and then eventually we're going to maybe, maybe explain to you why we're buying real estate in the U S yeah. and why maybe you should consider real estate in the U S. Okay. Well, maybe, Maybe, you know, this is how I built out the 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 logistics and the structure mm-hmm. of doing whatever. Okay, maybe it's too daunting for you to do it. Why don't you just partner with us in, in, yeah. instead? Yeah. This is why I'm not buying Canadian real estate, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe you should partner with us to buy U.S. real estate instead of Canadian real estate until the market turns. Maybe something like that. Or, hey, may, are you having a hard time losing weight? Do you need, you know, same thing with the Bulletproof. Are you tired in the morning? Mm-hmm. Even after you have coffee, yeah. try Bulletproof coffee. Throw some, here's, here's a quick video of me in the morning on, mm-hmm. on, on, uh, on, on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Like literally, I'm literally taking, you know, a spoonful of coconut yeah. oil and it doesn't even change the taste of the coffee that much. Yeah. It's actually like pretty tasteless. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about, I have like a little cup, you know, those little tiny mm-hmm. fucking Italian cups. They're not an espresso, but it's a coffee, not an Americana. Mm-hmm. And I like that. I like that strong you know, black yeah. coffee taste. Yeah. So, and it doesn't really change it that much. So, and, and I've noticed a big difference doing that. I never really did it before. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe it's a video like that, or maybe it's a, an email like that, explaining the benefits of doing that kind of thing. Right. And, uh, and then, Oh, by the way, guess who sells coconut oil? Canadian mm-hmm. protein does if you need it. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's an easy, it's an easy sell yeah. that I never, I don't know why I never and went we down can, this road. And we can just continue to add on, like, yeah. we have a new idea, add an email to yeah. the overall stream. Hey, this is the benefits of branch chain amino acids. Oh, by the way, yeah. we've got a sale on branch chain amino acids this week if you want to pick them up from CP. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I, I don't understand why. Yeah. I almost feel like... And, and then I, then over the weekend, I'm thinking in my, in my head, I'm like, remember how you mentioned, we'll sneeze yeah, and, and make a quarter mil? Mm-hmm. Like with, with CP, yeah. with a news blast, but or like a sale or whatever. But the amount of work that goes into making a tenth of that at the golf course yeah. is like fucking staggering. Yeah. 
so so then I'm thinking I'm like I have a decent following on social media, decent. Why the fuck am I not doing this? Mm-hmm. Like I could literally it could change the course of cultural capital synergy. Yeah. And for building and building one, leads one for synergy. Key, one key piece to all of this that you mentioned that I absolutely love is that every time that we're doing all of these things, they're always just one off, right? If yeah. we can find a way to take this one off email, but then put it into a like repeatable system, yeah. just kind of bring this full circle of being like, hey, well, this is the if you sign up for an email, these are going to be the list of a hundred emails that you're going to be receiving over the next year or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we can just continue to add to that list. Exactly. And I love that concept because yes, let's say for example you that have just a database of them all. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. right now, Dave will work to once again our marketing manager will work to develop a beautiful email that converts very well. We only ever use that once. I, I actually don't. I actually don't think it needs to be like a beautiful email. It, it, it no graphics yeah it's it, all it is is informational like it's, informational yeah, it's almost like something. it's coming from me personally which mm-hmm. it is but it's not like it's the other way it's not like graphics and this because that shit takes way too long number one true number two when that stuff happens you know it's not coming you know it's coming from business yeah right this is going to be coming from me personally mm, right I see. so it is i i want it to I, I don't want it to make it look like it's coming from like one of our businesses because it's not number right. one. Yeah, yeah. But I also don't want to have to invest that amount of time. Mm. And one of the one of the things that I notice as well is that um, I, I, I subscribe to one of these guys, a uh, couple of the guys. I am much more inclined to read something if it's not that long. Right. Like so. So this one guy, I think it's like a a restaurant. Uh, he he started a, a restaurant chain or a, a franchise, and I feel like he did a really good job. Doesn't have a crazy following on on Twitter or whatever, but he did a pretty good job of the text in the profile as well as his pinned post. Mm. Where his pinned post was like, "This is what I did, right? You should follow me for this. This is my Twitter page." And then he made another post saying. Oh, by the way, you should download this quick PDF of like the 10 most important steps of operating a successful franchise. Mm. So I clicked it and it was three pages. It wasn't like fucking 200 Mm. where when I clicked it, I knew I didn't have enough time to read it. Yeah. I read it there and then. Yeah. And it was a lead gen. Now he's got all my info, this and that. So now I'm going to have to like actually like work at, you know what I'm saying? Like he's got all my info. He's going to be able to, yeah. like the reason why I did actually click on it was because I was interested in, because we run a restaurant. I was interested in seeing like what he has to say. Because, you know, some franchises are really good to, in, uh, in, in in efficiencies that, yeah. that they've built, right? Yeah. Like, you know, Red Lobster, Olive Garden, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I was actually interested in what he had to say. But it was three pages. Maybe not even three, like two and a half page PDF. Yeah. Because Dave's always mentioning like you, you have to, you know, write a book and I don't disagree with him. I think the book that I'm going to end up writing is going to be like an autobiography. Yeah. It's going to be something along the lines of an autobiography, just like that video that I made on YouTube about uh, how to get rich in your 20s. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I what I did was I applied exactly what I did. And, and, and provided advice based off my personal experience mm-hmm. so that when you read the book, it's not just like y- you can learn from what I did, yeah. right? It's not a situation where it's, oh, you know, I came from this country and or or this was my life and I, you know, uh, you know, I really liked playing hockey. No, it's going to be this is how I got to where I was based off of these principles, based off of these facts based off of the actions that I took mm-hmm. and this is how you need to do it too. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to build a, I'm going to write a book like that. Maybe, you know, who knows, hundred pages, 150 pages, whatever, but that's what it's going to be based off. It's going to be literally be based off of my, my come up from the age of 20, for example, maybe not even late teens all the way till uh, being 40. Yeah. That's exactly how I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's why I'm gonna write the book. Dave is so hell bent on me writing a fucking book. And like, I always get people asking, like, hey, or not asking, but like, man, you need a book. You need to write a book. You need yeah. to write a book. You need to write a book. You know. And uh, so I'm gonna do it. But I think the lead gen thing was really interesting on 
you know, instead of even instead of writing Twitter threads, almost like writing a PDF and then having people like put in their info to actually be able to download that PDF instead of like writing these long posts. You mm-hmm. get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So that they're actually, you can somewhat monetize them because there's going to be useful information in there. It's going to be based off of my personal experiences. Mm-hmm. So why not try to capture something from it? Yeah. I'm not like, let's be honest. Like nobody in nobody trying to scale their social media presence is not trying to convert you. Everybody's trying to convert mm-hmm. to some extent, even fucking motivator guy. Yeah. Like, it's all about conversions. It's all about making, and, and the, the, what are conversions? It's all about making money. That is it. You know, let's not lie to ourselves, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, I I guess the whole point of this was my, and I to, again, to take it full circle, when we send out a newsletter, now don't get me wrong, our newsletter on CP is fucking huge. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm not oblivious to that either. However, you know, for example, this one guy that I was following here, he mentioned that he has a 90,000 uh, 90, subscribers to his newsletter. You could imagine if I had 90,000 people subscribe to my newsletter mm-hmm. personally, how fucking huge that is in terms of raising capital for real estate, all that kind of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if I could build that newsletter up from my personal, for my personal brand... Dude, I could only imagine how big that could be. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, see, I was imagining an email being like, um, like, hey, Canadian Protein customers, if you're ever interested in seeing like or hearing about the story of Canadian Protein and how we grow the business, like click here or whatever. Like, I don't know, like me, if I had no idea who the fuck you were, but I loved Canadian Protein and I got that, I'd be interested. Right. Interesting. I'm like, oh, cool. Like, I actually would be interested in knowing that, right? Because if I never have never come across you on social media, but I saw that being like, hey, do you want to know more about the behind the, behind the scenes of Canadian protein, learning about how we run the business, da da da? Like, I'd find that interesting. So, what if you came across my personal pages about Canadian protein? Would you be turned off as a customer? Me personally, no. But like, you will have a fraction of people that might be based on what yeah. uh, cars. D- no, just in, ter- in terms of like if somebody is um, like, I don't know, very like woke and shit, this, woke, the stuff that I say, like, yeah, that they just naturally will not like some of the stuff that you say. Yeah. But it's not like I it's not like right now I don't hide it. Right. But I don't know that I want to blast out to our like our entire customer base. Right. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. I don't know that I would want to do that. You know, Mm-hmm. We can we can put a pin in that one. <laughs> so I still I still like that the idea, but yeah, I, it, it's all in like, it's all in how you do it, Got right? It. Like yeah. in the exact same way that you said that your emails will be very text focused, focus on the quality of the information, actually trying to yeah. teach someone something, right? Like there's still a few I'd unsubscribe to fucking almost everything in my life, right? I try like minimizing the amount of emails I have coming in, and uh, there's still maybe a handful of ones that I stay subscribed to because actually I learn something each time something fucking yeah. comes in. And that's that's how it's got to be. Yeah. It's got to be like and that. They and it's got to be kind of short. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there's this one um, fitness guy that I've never bought any of his programs. I've never like um, he has affiliate links to supplement companies, whatever. Like I've never bought from any of those companies. But his email is extremely high quality in terms of like just teaching you fitness what stuff. Is he, what does he – get into um he does kind of like what do you call that category but maybe like functional training okay. like a lot of things around um injuries and a lot of things around um like like so right up your alley yeah 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 okay. that's the, and so i'm always learning something new interesting from What's his him. name uh, marcus philly mm. yeah um but he was like a former crossfit guy and then he just like fucking hated crossfit after a few <laughs> years which was just damaging his body Is that and then, right, eh? yeah yeah and then he just got really into um, like training for longevity and training for in a way that's not like damaging your joints and it's not, uh, and that you have great recovery and that you're able to have high muscle mass and low body fat while still being very flexible What's and it, having like, great give me cardio. Like the, give me like the nuts and bolts of like what he, like a, a, an example. Oh, it's like 
so he does break down like in terms of fitness and nutrition like separately mm-hmm. um like the things that i actually look for more often is his nutrition stuff because yeah. he'll be like hey here's what i ate today okay and i'm like okay that's super interesting like in it, an email yeah yeah and really like, it literally just hears him he's right he's right today and it's just a fucking list and i like op- i'll open it almost every single time i'm like okay that's an interesting way that and i'll be like okay, i'm gonna do that next week for and it's just list text that's it just all text maybe a couple images embedded um and then sometimes embedded to like a, his podcast or his like a youtube video or something and like he's got a decent following he's probably got four hundred thousand followers wow. on instagram or whatever decent yeah and <laughs> uh and he's been doing it yeah. doing it for a long time but it's and then so his some of his emails will be like hey here's the workout that i did today or being like uh hey i had uh such and such guy reach out to me because he was having knee pain here's the workout that i brought him through to like help him with the knee pain hmm. and it's just like it's, it's just extremely but like, what, like give me an example of what his workouts would be like it's a it's a lot of very unique stuff like um for example a workout might be and it's extremely detailed too which is why i like it it's not just like a generic workout program it's like okay here here's um the five exercises that i did today the first one was we started with like sled pulls of three sets of such and such distance hmm. you know what a sled pull is yeah yeah, yeah. What the fuck? are you joking i don't know what do you think i'm new well, maybe i don't know i was fuck. working out when you were a baby that's true um <laughs> so he'd be like hey such and such amount of sled pulls and here's like why we're doing sled pulls and then he's like then i'll do so he provides contacts as why why the yeah. sled pulls happening okay yeah, exactly then he'll be like hey we're doing what would be an example of why you would do sled pulls because it, it's like knee rehab is it that puts a lot of lo- load on your knee joint rather than your hip joint and so if you're trying to like rehab your knee okay then yeah like it helps kind of like warm up the, the oh, joints so that's more of a warm like up. first yeah yeah oh, okay. kind of like a first exercise okay then he goes into a um a split lunge like a stationary lunge where his front foot has is on a wedge where his toe is pointing downwards mm. because that once again loads the knee joint mm. higher mm. and he's like okay i'm also adding in an isometric hold at the bottom of every single uh, rep where I'm holding he's holding it like three inches off the ground because the isometrics will allow for less um, compensation when he goes to drive back up for example so there's like a little text yeah like which when, one or two like two lines yeah, of yeah. context why he's doing that and I, he'll have an image I remember you saying like yeah we, we that, I, I get it uh, I remember you saying how important that is to to actually pause yeah yeah if you have an injury yeah. like or even even uh, to prevent injur- injuries because mm-hmm. Usually, what people do is they'll bounce weight, yeah. right, yeah. or they'll bounce it off themselves, or just, I guess, start the uh, yeah. And, and the reason why it's start prob- the positive like too quick, like right. just kind of boom, 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 like that, and, mm-hmm. and you're 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 actually like loading the joint way too much, yeah. Like yeah, putting way too too much stress on your joint. Yeah, there's there's a couple kind of like aspects to the to the science of this. So the first thing is the whole idea of like elastic recoil, mm. right? That your muscle your actual muscles that attach to the 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 tendons your the tendons and ligaments that are within a joint they are your elastic um they they have the elastic properties in your body Mm. right whereas the muscle itself doesn't have that elastic property so if you're bouncing in and out of something like your your muscles are not doing the recruitment or the lift from something it's you're you're loading the joints the actual tendons and the ligaments for and you're getting that elastic recoil to Mm. kind of pop out of something yeah if you're coming down and pausing you're actually eliminating that elastic recoil yeah. that elastic property and then your muscles taking a higher percentage of the load yeah. not to say that your tendons and ligaments aren't working yeah, it's just course. they're not working in an elastic way yeah. right and the more that you bounce and the more that you're relying on your tendons in an exercise the higher risk you have for injury or if you are already injured the further like that, that your injury will hurt yeah and then the second aspect to it is that when it comes to like motor uh, uh motor unit recruitment so essentially or motor neuron recruitment that's what it was um so when you, when you have an injury like let's say for example you have an injury in your right knee mm. for example and you go to squat down if you're moving really quickly the way your body has already on a neurological level compensated so that you're shifting your body weight in such a way the center of mass in such a way that it reduces the load from your injured knee right and so because it shifts it that way it'll go more on your left knee left hip right hip right away from that injured knee Mm -hmm. and so then you're having more load on those joints you don't want that you want to have equal load across all of the joints Mm. right and so when you're just moving quickly through an exercise it doesn't allow if your body goes into that compensated position Mm -hmm. almost automatically right whereas when you actually like slow it down and you pause you're forcing the correct 
equal symmetrical motor neuron recruitment. And then if you're injured, it's going to force yourself over time to get more and more balance, which will help with your rehab, mm. right? Um, so that's why anytime, yeah, so isometrics are very good for re reducing the elastic uh, properties. And the second thing is just like slowing the fuck down and pausing will help with keeping the symmetry on things, right? Hmm. And uh, so anyway, so those are two kind of like concepts. Now, he doesn't talk about those as just like concepts. He'll apply those to yeah. a specific exercise prescription, yeah. which, I find, which I find is super interesting, yeah. Inter right? Yeah, and I'm always looking, although I'm, I'm no longer training anymore, I still find that shit super interesting. Yeah. Um, even like if I ever were in the gym and I'm like, man, like my shoulder's bugging me, I'll, I'll break down, to, I'll like search in my fucking email like that guy's name and like shoulder and see if I can find anything as like a database. Yeah, yeah. I, I could tell you like slowing down and then pausing ha has significantly helped with, you know, I guess my lagging injuries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I say it loosely because I never really, really hurt myself that bad. But, you know, you get, I'm sure I've got some, you know, yeah, short, like my left shoulder is always kind of achy and, mm -hmm. you know, it hurts. And I, I, you know, I got a small tear in my rotator cuff. But when I apply those things, it helps yeah. significantly, actually. And like a really, co really common one, especially in like a, a barbell squat, is just l losing your flat lower back, right? Yeah. Uh, dropping into a pelvic tilt, either yeah. anterior pelvic tilt or posterior pelvic pelvic tilt. And it's so common to lose. And what what allows your spine to stay straight is your core rigidity, right? Mm -hmm. If you're keeping your core extremely tight, your your lumbar spine will stay perfectly straight. Yeah. And uh, or in, in its like optimal position. And so uh, if so you're when you when you have a pelvic tilt. You're lo you, you end up taking load off of what and then what ends up getting stressed. Yeah. So if you, you want to think of it almost like um, uh, in engineering, think of like a, a stud in a house or whatever, right? Like you want that stud to be perfectly straight mm -hmm. because then the load goes directly through it and then mm -hmm. it transfers on, into the ground. In the if, you, if, you, yeah, if you imagine then having a stud in your house that's bowed, mm -hmm. what's going to happen as you apply a load to that? It's just yeah. going to like... Yeah. Whoops, sorry. It will go like that, essentially, yeah. where it'll have a, um, um, whatever that fucking word is, um, where like load goes outwards mm. on, and it yeah. has a more risk of actually snapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And so the same thing applies to your spine, right? In between your entire spine, if you imagine your spine as that stud, you're going to have intervertebral discs, mm -hmm. right? That are like little fucking cushions mm -hmm. that you want to be able to, you want all of your vertebrae to be essentially be pushing down with equal load around yeah the circle so that the load kind of gets pushed out equally. Yeah. Whereas that if you have your spine now that's bent either this way or this way, depending on which direction of anterior, uh, pelvic, uh, sorry, which direction of pelvic, t pelvic tilt that you go into, you're then going to have it. Like, let's say now you have this, um, hypothetical cushion that you're only squeezing down on the one side. Yeah. It's going to have a high chance of rupturing yeah, this way. Exactly. And, and then, that's like literally, literally how you can get slip discs. Yeah. Right. And so that's kind of like the, how you connect having your core rigidity, which you can really only accomplish if you are moving slower through movement. Now you have advanced Olympic lifters, uh, weight lifters that are moving very quick, but they're so highly trained in this yeah. with no injuries. And they've been doing this for a very long time. Yeah. They can have extremely explosive movements. Yeah. It's not the same. I'm yeah. just talking beginners or injured, injured people. Yeah, yeah. Right. Not even be, I wouldn't even say intermediate, even it, professional, even, like, yeah, even not intermediate, professional, but like maybe yeah. advanced, you yeah. know, I, I don't think it's, you know, I've been lifting for a long time. I've, right. I've had some pretty serious friends. I've been around pro bodybuilders, stuff like that. And just some of these guys just, you know, especially even like pro bodybuilders, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Mm -hmm. They actually don't. Now, you know, they look like they know what they're talking about. Yeah. But, you know, it's this this stuff this stuff honestly gets really important as well as you mm -hmm. start getting a little bit older yeah like really important as re you get older a really interesting comparison in professional bodybuilding is the whole idea of kai green versus uh, ronnie coleman right because they're from the same era right mm -hmm. they have close enough right okay i mean Kai no. Green was quite a bit later, but I get, yeah, I get yeah. what I mean. But what I'm what I'm saying though is that like even in terms of like the, I'm not saying that they body bodybuild at the same time. They're almost from the same kind of like era in terms of like mindset around bodybuilding. Okay, right. And so my, what I was going to say though is that like Kai Green almost had a very very different approach to, and they had very similar physiques as well. I'm not saying the exact same, but they had very similar similar physiques. Yeah. Kai Green was 
all about form and technique and yeah. is extremely flexible. Yeah. Like that guy yeah, yeah. can drop into the splits like there's no yeah. tomorrow. And when you actually look through his injury history compared to Ronnie Coleman, now Ronnie Coleman was a, like at a whole other different level. But I'm saying if you just look in terms of like their training philosophies, I think Kai Green was very before his time in terms of like looking at all the preventative aspect yeah. of it. And now he's in his 50s, right? Is he that old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's really? in his 50s no now. Way. 50s there's no way he's 50 really check how old is kai green 47 okay so close yeah yeah wow yeah how old is ronnie coleman i think maybe 10 years older 59 okay yeah but 10 yeah. years yeah yeah wow um and so that's close yeah yeah so yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that they're bodybuilding at the same time but i'm yeah. saying that like they're from the same era of um and even uh, uh, yeah so where you're going to have him with like his injury list is like a fraction of what Ronnie yeah. Coleman, Col yeah. Coleman's injury list was, right? I mean, if you, even if you look at where Ronnie Coleman was, even call it 10 years ago yeah. with his um, kind of like health and his injuries yeah. versus Kai Green, very different, yeah. right? Um, yeah, another guy could, he can't even walk, man. He can't even walk, yeah. Like he, he, like he, man, that guy, yeah. Where Kai Green is not competing in the Olympias anymore, but he's still training at a very intense level right at 47 years old yeah right yeah. Uh, another interesting example is um michael hearn who also is probably around the same age as ronnie coleman yeah let's see mike how old is mike hearn six no that's not him mike mike, o mike o'hearn how old is michael hearn mike o'hearn oh o'hearn that's right O'Hearn. yeah how old is mike o'hearn 54 yeah yeah and uh and like the guy fucking pumps out crazy weight and has a crazy physique still in his 50s but he's always been even like back in the days when he first got started extremely strict on form and he's was always he really, pushing yeah? this yeah and uh and like i was always kind of like form over weight like and the guy's got an ego like crazy but I, ironically he'd be like hey leave your ego at the door when it comes to how much weight you're lifting and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. right and uh, so you almost like really see a divide in the people that are emphasizing that versus like the people that are just like, yeah, losing form and technique. Mm -hmm. And now Ronnie might have also had like, um, um, what do you call it? Like pre uh, existing conditions or maybe genetically he was more likely to develop arthritis or heart maybe conditions. Maybe stronger than normal, wanted to, you know, yeah, keep what, going with that because that was his thing. And I mean, the guy would lift serious weight like yeah. serious oh yeah he's probably he's probably one of the most impressive bodybuilders ever in terms yeah. of the amount of weight he was lifting For sure. yeah. um but right. my whole my whole point is is that like you you really do see in terms of like the longevity of uh this uh, of when you're looking at the style of people's lifting yeah. strategies yeah right interesting okay that's it